And literally in two months, you can have a year's worth of chicken to put in your deep freezer. Ever since we did our first batch of meat chickens, we are sold. We do them every single year. And now we even raise them for friends and family and other people in the community. So I wanted to give you a little rundown on how we do our meat chickens. That right there is my chicken brooder. Um, I am waiting on a batch of meat chickens right now. They should be here next week. We put all the cheap meat chickens in that brooder and the Cornish crosses, they grow really fast, really quick. So we can put them in that brooder and if the weather is nice, if it's warm, by the time they're two weeks old, I can literally put them out in the chicken tractor on the grass. Generally speaking, thank you. They move out of the brooder pretty fast. So once we get them out of the brooder, we put them in the chicken tractors. So I don't like to run meat chickens in the same spot twice in a year. We put them in the tractor and every day I go in there and feed them, give them some water, and I go ahead and move the tractor up one tractor length to a fresh patch of grass. Um, sometimes we do that right out there, just in my backyard, or I have a bigger pasture out in my front yard um, that's really long, and we'll run them literally all the way down the pasture and all the way back. My chicken tractors are very lightweight, so they're super easy to move. I just move them by hand, but they're super lightweight. Um, with that being said, I have three dogs on our homestead and two of them are Great Prianis Anatolian Shepherd mixes and we will keep one of the dogs with the chicken tractor the whole time it's running down the pasture. Since I have the dogs with the chickens, I can get away with having a really lightweight chicken tractor. If you're worried about predators, you might want to build something a little more solid than what we have. Our biggest predator out here are actually aerial predators like hawks and owls, um, which we have lost some birds to. So um, anytime I order meat chickens, I always order a few extra than what we want, um, just in case we end up losing some. So I'm gonna give y'all a little bit of a closer look at our process um, on how we do our meat birds. And um, coming up here in about uh, maybe two weeks, um, we have our batch of meat birds that we're raising for our own freezer for the year. They are gonna be ready to process in about two weeks. So we are gonna do a video for y'all on how to process your own meat chickens right in your own backyard. So we're super excited about that. That's it, that's how we do our meat birds. That's how you can do meat birds. Even if you're in a, in, you know, on a small parcel of land, you can still get a small chicken tractor, build a small chicken tractor, and you don't have to do a year's worth of chicken. Maybe you only do a half a year's worth of chicken. Say you get maybe 20 birds to start with. 20 chickens will last your family a really long time. Even if you're in a small backyard, you can still do it. Meat chickens do not take up a lot of space. So it's one way that you can start growing your own food right in your back, backyard and take control of your food. Y'all can do this. I know that you can because I do it. <laughs> if I can do this kind of stuff, anybody can do this kind of stuff. So um, that's it. That's how we do our meat birds. I can't wait to show y'all more of the process. And hey, if y'all are liking my channel, go ahead and make sure you hit the subscribe button. But let the biggest meat chicken ever. Oh my gosh, he is so heavy. All right, so this is my chicken brooder. When I get my meat chickens or any chicken that I get from the hatchery, um, I put them in this brooder. Both of these doors open up. I do have a divider panel that can go down in the center if I want to keep two separate brooder areas. Um, it is the hardware cloth bottom, so it's super easy to clean. Um, in the winter time or early springtime though, I do usually put hay or pine shavings in the bottom of it to keep the draft from coming up through the bottom. So um, that's my chicken brooder. 
Hey y'all, I just got the shipping confirmation that my meat chickens um, have hatched and they are officially in the mail. So I am out here, I've got to get my brooder set up. Um, I had to go and get some new heat lamps. I wanted to put an extra one out here because it's, um, it's still February. So um, it was in the 30s this morning and I think tomorrow morning it's supposed to be 36, but then we're supposed to have beautiful weather. It's supposed to warm up. So. Um, I'm not too concerned about it though. I'm going to have two heat lamps running in this brooder plus I'll have hay in the bottom of it. That's it. I'm just getting set up for my meat chickens. Um, that way when the post office calls me tomorrow morning um, I can be ready to go. Be ready to put them in a nice warm brooder. So, Hey y'all. It is early in the morning. I got a wake up call from the post office this morning saying that I had baby chicks at the post office waiting to be picked up. So I'm sure you can hear all that chirping going on in my truck right now. So um, I've got to get all these little guys in the brooder. From Alabama, we're in Florida, so they don't have to come far. I only have three chicks in here at the moment that hatched here on the farm, <laughs> but they're about to have 50 new friends. So hopefully they're ready for company. I've got the big water container in here and their food. So this is how I keep my baby chicks. They've got a heat lamp over there in the corner. All right, let's get these chicks out. All right, these birds are three weeks old, ready for the tractor to be put out on the pasture. Hey y'all, here's a look at our chicken tractor that we're running right now. Um, it's been a great little chicken tractor. It's just made out of um, some lightweight fencing and some PVC, it's like a little hoop house. And uh, this right here is actually, the shade cloth on it is actually a trampoline mat. So it was a good repurpose. So our, our meat birds are in here. Um, once they get put out in the chicken tractor, um, the tractor gets moved every day. I come out here and I move it and I feed them every single day. They get a nice fresh spot. Although it's winter, so the grass isn't looking really great, but, um, this batch of birds is doing really good. These are the Cornish Cross Freedom Ranger birds. The Cornish crosses are the white birds. They um, are, they are, they grow out a little bit faster. You can usually process a Cornish cross in like eight to 10 weeks, but we've had them go 12 weeks. So the Freedom Rangers take a little bit longer to grow out than the Cornish crosses. Um, they'll take more like three or four months, but I don't really see them taking four months. Um, I think they're growing really great. I ended up having to permanently put the Freedom Rangers in with the Cornish crosses which was not the plan, but uh, we were losing a bunch of them to aerial predator, maybe an owl. All right, here's a little update on the meat chickens. It's been um, about another week and a half or so. They are looking just really, really great. I'm super excited about this batch of meat birds. So what we're planning on doing is processing um, I believe next weekend, right? I added these feeders to the sides of the chicken tractor. And, uh, you know, it's just a PVC pipe cut in two. And um, it's really nice because I can pour feed right in it. They move with the chicken tractor. They are looking great. These are probably gonna mostly dress out to be I think between four and six pound birds. Hey y'all, 
It is a beautiful day. I think this is the first morning that we've had that has been warm. Um, so I'm super excited about that. It definitely feels like springtime today. So just on my way out to make the morning rounds. We are two days out from processing this batch of meat chickens. Um, so I would definitely call them done. All right. <laughs> Always here for the opener. I just put some feed out for the meat chickens. We are going to process all of the Cornish crosses and all but four of the Freedom Rangers. We're going to give the Freedom Ranger hens and one rooster their own little coop to see uh, what they would do as far as egg production and fertile eggs and hopefully maybe hatch out some meat chickens. The Cornish crosses are 11 weeks old right now, which means the Freedom Rangers are 13 and a half weeks right now. We've actually never ate a Freedom Ranger bird before, so I am super excited to be able to try the Freedom Rangers. I really want to do like a side-by-side -side cooking comparison, the Cornish Cross and the Freedom Ranger. So we're gonna make a video on processing day as well for y'all. Um, that way y'all can check it out. This guy right here, this is a Cornish Cross rooster who at the time of his butcher date was way too little to butcher. He just did not grow with the rest of the chickens. And um, so we didn't butcher him. So right now he is like two and a half or three years old. We may actually end up butchering him in a couple days. Cornish crosses are not supposed to live very long um, because of the way that they're built. Um, they oftentimes end up with leg problems. So they don't typically live this long. So this guy has had a super, super long life. Olive is his best friend. We'll see if we want to butcher him or just let him, let him let it live his life. We might just let him live his life. He's super nice. He's not aggressive at all. He eats a lot of dog food with Olive. He usually finishes Olive's food, <laughs> which is probably, probably why he's built like he is. I don't know that we would want to eat him. <laughs> the biggest meat chicken ever. Oh my gosh, he is so heavy. That's it. That's how we do our meat birds. That's how you can do meat birds. Even if, And hey, if y'all are liking my channel, go ahead and make sure you hit the subscribe button. But let me know that you subscribed. That way I can make sure to know that you're here and say hey to y'all. Thanks.